Boss Encounters, the video game equivalent of the pop quiz, where players have to show the system what they've learned. You might have noticed I used the word encounters instead of fights, because in the weird and wonderful world of stealth games, we don't always get to fight a boss. Sometimes we sneak past them, or we have to catch them off guard. Every once in a while, we find a stealth game where any number of outcomes is possible with a boss encounter. Now show yourself! In this series, I'll be looking at how some modern stealth games have designed unique boss encounters and in what ways they challenge the player. Today, I'm talking about Aragami. Aragami is a stealth game in which players control a literal shadow assassin, the titular Aragami. Players have a number of powers at their command, but the two most important mechanisms are shadow creation, which the player can use to create temporary shadows in the game space, and shadow leap, which allows their character to teleport into nearby shadows. The game emphasises the power dynamics of light and darkness for its stealth-based character. When players are in the shadows, they're hidden and can recharge their abilities. When they move through well-lit areas, their powers are drained, and they're easy prey for patrolling guards. Directly confronting enemies, all enemies, in a straight-up fight, is not possible. Well, it's... it's possible, it just won't be very encouraging. The player can kill enemies or avoid them, but never fight them. And the same is true of Aragami's bosses. Aragami's three boss encounters begin in the last quarter of the game, after the player has already dealt with all of the standard enemy types, upgraded most of their powers and skills, and become used to traversing the game space using Shadow Leap and Shadow Creation. What does this tell us? That the player is expected to thoroughly understand how Aragami's environment, tools, and rules of engagement work, and each boss is designed to challenge them in ways that previous scenarios haven't. Originally I was going to talk at length about all three boss encounters in this game, and how each encounter offers something new to challenge the player in a stealth-based capacity. This sounds like it would have been a good idea, but in practice the script ended up being too bloated, and upon reflection, I wanted to use this series to home in on stealthy boss encounters whose core designs did not revolve around the traditional adversarial boss fight designs of other video game genres. And when it comes to Aragami, there's definitely a boss encounter that stands above the others in this regard. Meet Sora. This boss encounter takes place across three distinct areas on a single map. As the player surmounts the challenges in one area and proceeds to the next, the difficulty spikes and they're rewarded with a checkpoint. The goal is not to kill the boss, rather to traverse the level as stealthily as possible while being tracked and, if detected, attacked by a deadly active obstacle. Sora is out of the player's reach and has the means to detect them through line of sight, even if the player's character is hidden in the shadows. Hiding behind rocks, fences or other pieces of hard cover is the only way to avoid being detected. Sora will fire projectiles at the player's last suspected location if they break cover. Even if the arrows themselves don't hit the player, they spawn short-lived fireballs that can track Aragami at close range, make him fully visible to enemies, drain his powers, and if he can't shake them off, as the player progresses through each area, Sora changes her position to find new angles to spot and shoot at them. Guards are still present, of course, and since they're almost always being covered by Sora from her vantage point, it's a risky move to try to neutralise them. An added environmental hazard, introduced in earlier missions, is the thunderstorm raging above. 
Lightning periodically flashes across the sky, with the brief bursts of light draining Aragami's powers and making him highly visible to enemies. With so many elements in the mix, it's easy to imagine how players could quickly become frustrated with this boss encounter, so let's break it down, area by area, and look at how it was designed to engage and challenge players. The first area is an oblong stretch of land, littered with pieces of hard cover. As the player moves through it, the boss's position shifts several times, and there are one or two bits of exposed ground where the player can be caught out if they're not careful. This first area is designed as a pure encounter between the player and the level's main enemy. To familiarise players with Sora's behaviour, the conditions under which she can spot them, and the persistent threat of her projectiles. The environmental hazard of the thunderstorm is also made clear to players at this first stage. The second area is larger and irregular, bringing verticality to the environment with abandoned buildings, which offer more cover from Sora's arrows, but patrolling guards have also been added to the mix. These regular enemies can investigate audio and visual cues telegraphed by careless players, pushing Aragami into exposed spaces where other guards or Sora's field of view can catch him. Players are free to tackle the situation however they see fit. Guards can be neutralised or ignored. The area can be dashed through or tackled using a more patient, methodical approach. Either way, Sora's presence, position switching, and heightened awareness state mean that any player has to think carefully before they move, take out an enemy, or attract the AI's attention. The third and final area is an open courtyard, divided by a moat. Sora takes up an overwatch position at one end, from which she can target the player almost everywhere except the high ground directly to either side of her. There are more guards patrolling, only now they are supplemented with archers on the high ground next to Sora's position. Archers have a longer and wider view range than their regular guard counterparts. Sora is protected by a light barrier, which the player has to bypass by smashing its connected light orbs. These are placed either side of the boss's position, and the only way the player can get to them is by making their way through the guard patrols and up to the high ground on each side. Unlike the previous two areas, whose checkpoints were placed right at the start, this third area has checkpoints for each orb the player manages to destroy, as well as at the player's entry point. So, how does this all tie together? Checkpoints notwithstanding, this is arguably the toughest boss encounter in the game, because it features almost every obstacle players have faced in the missions leading up to it, with the added complication of a powerful active obstacle hunting them at a distance. There are places where players can find respite from Sora's penetrating gaze, or hide from searching foes, but the boss's default behaviour pattern is one of target seeking, and she changes positions to keep track of Aragami's movements. It's clear that a lot of thought went into how this encounter with Sora would begin, then escalate, and finish. The difficulty spikes with Sora's introduction as an enemy the player cannot neutralise, whose ability to quickly detect and attack them far outclasses that of every other enemy in the game. After the first area is cleared, the difficulty moves upwards again as regular enemies and more varied terrain are brought in. Players going for a perfect demon score, for which they have to kill every guard, are going to have the most trouble here, since they'll have to find viable methods to take out all enemies without being tracked and killed by Sora, which is a lot tougher than it sounds. One mistake is all it takes to undo minutes of hard work. The courtyard area at the end has less cover available to players as they move through guard patrols to destroy the final barrier, and it's as difficult to neutralise every single enemy as it is to avoid contact altogether. However, the more liberal approach to checkpoints here does loosen the tension built up throughout the first two areas of the encounter, where a death could cost players valuable progress. Once one orb is destroyed, players won't have to start this section from scratch. 
Once both orbs are destroyed, Sora makes a retreat into the nearby stronghold, and Aragami follows. This particular boss encounter is less about contesting a powerful foe in an adversarial one-on-one -on -one deathmatch, and more about adding a unique obstacle to an infiltration mission, in which victory is found in evading and surviving the threat it poses. Detection doesn't simply result in a fail state. Players have a chance to avoid Sora's attacks and find cover again. Put in simpler terms, Sora is a souped-up guard with her own patterns of behaviour that push the player towards adopting new evasion tactics. The inclusion of regular guard patrols, the environmental hazard of the thunderstorm, and three distinct areas on the map whose cover points become increasingly exposed results in the stealthiest challenge the game has to offer, particularly for players attempting to kill every enemy or avoid detection completely. This is a gauntlet of stealth game design, and I would argue a good example of how stealthy boss encounters can be done well. The adversarial nature of, let's call it a typical boss encounter, is swapped out for something more ambitious, more in line with Aragami's nature as a stealth game. The emphasis is not on the player contesting the power of the system with their own, rather on avoiding and subverting it. And regardless of whether or not we like boss encounters to be in our stealth games at all, there's a lot to be said for the developer who hands players a boss encounter without asking them to forget, albeit temporarily, that they're playing a stealth game.